Lord, we ask that you come and take control of this song. Come and be in our midst. Come and glorify yourself again as you normally do. Let your minister, let him, let him reduce for you to increase, Lord. We exalt you. We thank you, Lord. Take the glory. Be magnified. Strengthen us where we are weak, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Good morning once again. Well, I guess we should all console ourselves. Like I said just now, with the knowledge of Christ Jesus. Awake, awake, O arm of the Lord. That's our prayer sermon for this morning. Awake, awake, O arm of the Lord. Isaiah 51 verse 9. He says, awake, awake, arm of the Lord. Clothe yourself with strength. Awake as in days gone by. As in generations of old. Was it not you who cut Rahab to pieces? Who pierced that monster? That is a new international version. Awake, awake, O arm of the Lord. Were you not the one who pierced that monster to the New Living Translation says, Wake up, wake up, O Lord. Clothe yourself with strength. Flex your mighty right arm. Rouse yourself as in the days of old, when you slew Egypt the dragon of the Nile. When you slew Egypt the dragon of the Nile. Wake up, wake up, O Lord. Awake again. Clothe yourself with strength. Flex your mighty right arm. There's nothing like the mighty right arm of the Lord. Father, if anybody still wants to come online, let your angels go and rouse that person. The Lord is saying, there's some people who would want to be online, but the enemy will ensure they are asleep. Hallelujah. Awake, awake Zion. Isaiah 52 verse 1. That's different from Isaiah 51 verse 9. Isaiah 52 verse 1. Awake, awake Zion. Clothe yourself with strength again. Put on your garments of splendor. Jerusalem, the holy city, the uncircumcised and defiled will not enter you again. There are two <coughs> people waking up right now. One is the, the mighty arm of the Lord, who's being allowed. The second one is the people, his own people, Zion. Clothe yourself with strength, that is wherever you are weak. Put on your garments of splendor. Jerusalem, the holy city, the uncircumcised and defiled will not enter you again. That is my prayer for those who might be afraid right now, like I said, because of all these uh, idiotic terrorist uh, activities in, you know, in, like the one we had in, in Boston. May the Lord have mercy on the souls of those who lost their lives and even those who are still battling to stay alive right now in hospital. May the Lord have mercy. Exodus 6, 6 says, Therefore say to the Israelites, I am the Lord and I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. The Lord has made that promise come to you. I will free you from being slaves to them. And I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. There is nothing like the mighty outstretched arm of God. When the mighty outstretched arm of God is stretched out, <laughs> anything can happen. Imagine that even Moses, the servant, he just said, stretch out your hand. Stretch out that, that stick in your hand. And he parted the whole ocean. So imagine if the Lord himself decides to stretch out his own arm. Is there any among us this morning who is feeling that God has finished with him or her? Is there any among us tonight who is thinking I'm no longer usable of the Lord? Because there are many of us who are in that way. Emotionally we're in that way. We think it's all over. We think it's, it's nothing can be done. Is there any among us who feels worthless to help themselves save helping somebody else this morning? <laughs> well, I need to tell that person this morning, you must be able to understand that the Lord never leaves his firstborn. He never forgets his anointed. He is never tired of his chosen. And he's never tired of helping his chosen. You think the Lord has forgotten you? You think he has forgotten the promise he made that he will help you in that situation? You think he has forgotten? His outstretched arm never fails. His outstretched arm 
never fails. Isaiah 41, 10 to 20. Isaiah 41, 10 to 20. Pause will you read it to me? And if you have your Bible, follow. I always ask people, bring your Bible to the prayer line. I don't hear uh, for, for eloquent words like, like Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2, 4. We are here to demonstrate the power of God. And the way you can demonstrate the power of God is through his word. Isaiah 41, 10 to 20. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. This is promise, these are promises. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. You see the right hand? His right hand again being spoken out there. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. Somebody be saying amen there. They shall be as nothing, and they shall strive with, and they that strive with thee shall perish. It's a given. Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them. Even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. I need to tell somebody, I'm sure some people are in utter fear right now in the northeast because of that occurrence. You know, because I mean, how can you just go out just to go and relax? And then the next thing your folks, your family members hear is that you are in the morgue somewhere. That can bring fear and terror. The Bible says, Thou shalt seek your enemies, and you shall not find them. Even those that contend with you, they that war against you, shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. His right hand will hold my right hand, will hold your right hand, saying, Fear thee not, I will help thee. Fear not, thou warm Jacob, and ye men of Israel. I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Hallelujah. When you have the Holy One of Israel as your help, nothing, nothing, brethren, no circumstance will shame you. Is your rent due? If you have no way of paying it right now, is your mortgage due? You have no way of paying. <laughs> I remember one of my my beloved friends and confidants, somebody that is so trustworthy. Rent, the, 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 it was obvious that uh, a foreclosure was in place, and they were doing everything to embarrass this my friend. And I kept on saying, "That's not what the Lord is saying." But of course, when you say those things, it sounds like it's you talking. When the Lord has to, uh, has promised that he's your redeemer, you know what it means to redeem? is to save you from an impossible situation. To save you. To save you from an impossible situation. To redeem something is to bring you back from a situation that is hopeless. When the Lord says, I am your redeemer, the holy one of Israel. Uh -uh. That person I'm talking about today, of course, is no longer in foreclosure situation. God has changed it. I don't know what your situation is. Look at Isaiah, uh, look at Isaiah there that we're reading, Isaiah 41 15 now. He says, Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument, having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small, and shall make the hills as sharp. A worm will now have a sharp threshing teeth. Can you imagine a worm? What is a worm? A worm is this funny thing that moves around and can barely help itself in the sand. And it will now have a teeth to, to bring down mountains. That is how God can transform you in your wicked state. Thou shalt fan them and the wind shall carry them away. When you have threshed the hills, and made as chaff. It says you will find them, find them the mountain. The wind shall carry the, 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 the chaff away. And the whirlwind shall scatter them. And thou shalt rejoice in the Lord. And shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. There will always be a, a, a place when the Lord will cause you to rejoice. My brother, my sister. Just be saying amen there in, in, in faith and in belief. That the Lord will still turn any captivity situation around. 
you will turn it around. One minute it will be looking completely hopeless and helpless. The next minute, uh -huh, it will be like, wow, 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 wow. There are situations that make you to open your mouth and you can't close them. It's like your mouth is paralyzed. When you open your mouth because of an incredible thing that the Lord has just a situation that looks completely hopeless that God has suddenly turned around. When you have done something in extreme faith, when you when it looks like it's completely impossible, and then he turns it around. Oh, he will set your feet upon the solid ground. He will turn your situation around. When the poor and the needy seek water, Isaiah 41, 17, there is none and their tongue faileth for thirst. I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. Every time the Lord takes me back to this Isaiah 41, I just look at the mercy of God. When the poor and the needy seek water, that means the Lord knows when you are poor. He knows when you need water. He knows when you need a fresh inflection. He knows when you are weak, when you are becoming weak. He knows when you need an injection, a fresh injection of, of oil or fire. Where you need it, and there is no, because there are decisions in the physical realm, in the spiritual realm, when everything has dried up, even the oil of the anointing is looking dried up. He says, and their tongue faded for thirst. I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. That means he's waiting. He's waiting warm. Call yourself a warm. Call yourself and somebody who can get, who nothing can happen for again. You are thinking nothing can happen. You are thinking you will never get that child. You are thinking you will never get that husband again. You are thinking that your child can never be saved. That your child can never be healed again. You are thinking that your drunken husband can never be turned around again. He says, I will not forsake you. I will not forsake you. Look at the promises there. 1819, I will open rivers in high places. You know what it means to open a river in a high place? <laughs> fountains in the midst of the valleys. A fountain is supposed to be a source. A source is usually higher than the ground. But it says even in the valley when it looks impossible, we can make fountains. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I said every time I go back to these promises, I just wonder that this is a wonderful God who can plant all kinds of trees in the wilderness and put them together. So that those who see my consider it. This is God's message to his believing people brethren, in this world. Of course, we're often troubled and tried. We're often persecuted and perplexed. Tempted and trampled upon in this world. Look at some people, like I said. There will be Christians amongst those who are wounded today in the, the attack we were talking about in, in Boston. Or anywhere around the world. There's no time Christians are not being persecuted. Just for being a Christian has, has uh, made you a target. Just because you hold a blue passport or something makes you a target for some people. Just because of the color of your skin makes you a target for some people. Just because of your gender makes you a target for some people. Just because of your beliefs makes you a target for some people. You, they will persecute, they will perplex you, they will tempt you, and they will trample you in this world. But our God is saying to you and me, fear not thou Jacob. He's saying, fear not thou Jacob. Uh, warm Jacob. You know what it means to be a warm, like I said earlier. The purpose of God in the verses we just read is to silence our fears. He is to encourage his people so that we can trust him in the midst of trouble and adversity. Because trouble and adversity, forget it, they will always be there. <laughs> they are perpetual until we get to paradise. Trouble and adversity, they will always rise up. It is contrary to the mind of God for his people to be timid, to be fearful, to be anxious at any time. So to suppress our fears, he constantly assures us that he's there, that his power is there, that his provision is there for us. If you look at those verses in, 
in uh, Isaiah 41, verses 10, 13, and 14. Fear not, fear not, fear not thou warm Jacob. What God is trying to tell us is stop being fearful. When situations occur that makes us look like we should fear, when circumstances occur, when the world, through the prince of this world, tries to destroy anything that can, that can be useful to God, especially inside of us, the Lord is saying, fear not. Even though your enemies are many, even though they are mightier than you, even though they are more powerful than you, even though they have more money than you, even though they have more connections than you, fear not. Why? Because the God that you and I serve is greater than our enemies. Greater. He says, I am with thee. No man shall sit on thee to hurt thee. Though your afflictions, they can be protracted, they can be delayed, maybe they, can, they are very painful, you can hardly bear them. He's still saying to you and I, fear not. Why? Because he would deliver us. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivered <clears throat> them from it all, from all of it. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. First Corinthians 10, 13. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you and I to be tempted above what we are able to bear? But with the temptations that we are in, he will always make a way of escape. Brethren, the Lord will always make a way of escape so that we can bear it. As long as you are his child, he will always make a way of escape. He will always make a way of escape. Even if your path is dangerous, it's difficult. You don't know how to do it. The word of God is saying, Jacob, you are fear not. You are not. That's what he's saying. Our God will uphold us and sustain us. He will help us. Remember what the word of God says. Faithful is he that calleth you. Who will also do it? That's what I used to remind myself. Sometimes when the ministry is looking impossible. Sometimes when the people you are trying to even minister to, when they are the worst enemies you can have, and you don't even know how to move forward again. I remember that word. Faithful is he that called me. Who will also do it? I remember the day the Lord called me. I was in his sleep and he said, go and start the business. I will quicken it now. That is what I still hold on to. April 23rd it will make uh, eight years that that particular call came. Faithful is he that called me. Who will also do it? He will do it. He has been my strength in those days. Even then he called me, he explained and everything became difficult for a while. He came, he couldn't even understand what was happening. But the Lord kept on saying, fear not, and that's what I'm Transferring to you, my brother, my sister, this morning. The Lord is saying, fear not. If he has made a promise, he will never fail. He has promised, he will never fail. I will follow, I will follow him. My God has promised, he will never fail. He is faithful there. Yes, forevermore, he is faithful there. Is forevermore. That's what the Lord is saying this morning. I don't know what the Lord has promised you. Though the fulfillment of God's promise, maybe you cannot see it right now. Maybe you cannot see that all right now. Fear not. Not one promise of God shall fall to the ground. But his word says, I am not a man. God is not a man that he should lie. All his promises in God. In Christ Jesus, they are yea, and in him they are amen. And the glory of God. <laughs> so God's word to us this morning. Fear not thou warm Jacob. Fear not thou warm Jacob. We need to apply some things to our hearts. First, we need to understand that we are all weak and helpless warm for God. That is where many people miss it. Say, no, my God is a power. Yes, I'm not saying your God is very powerful. Either I'm serving and I did not say you cannot. But remember first and foremost that you are weak and helpless before him. You need to be humble before him. I don't care if you are the biggest bishop in the world. 
I don't care if your church has a million followers or 10 million for that matter. You need to be humble before him. You need to be humble. We are helpless worms. When he says, fear not worm, Jacob, what can be worse than a worm? <laughs> a worm, he might as well translate a worm as something like a maggot. No one wants to touch a maggot. A maggot is something that is comes from putrefaction, when something is, is decomposing. When it's, it's something that is dirty, that is breeding with disease. Things that can make our skins to crawl. But that is what the word the, the word Lord has used to describe you and I. Warm Jacob. That we are just worms. You know what happens to a worm? If a worm dies, it dries up right there on the on the grass there. After a while, it just looks like a piece of a, you know, a piece of a wood or something on the floor, and it just dries up there. It becomes sand again. That is what God used to describe us, and it's an accurate description. It's an accurate description. If you look at in the olden days when they write him, they talk about warm Jacob. They are just a warm. But today, those those things have been removed. Like I was saying the other day, the traditions of men have taken over what should be the traditions of God. People are afraid to use the warm inside the church now. How can he call me warm? But that's what the world calls you. When your pastor is preaching and saying you are a war, oh, this man is offensive. What kind of human being is this? But well, the truth is, the Lord says you are a war, and I'm a war. It's an offensive word, offensive to your thought process, to your pride, to your thinking. But the Lord says you are a war. He says I am a war. A war is, is a dirty thing. A war is weak, it's a helpless creature. It cannot defend itself. Just pour a little salt on warm, and you'll see the way it will crumble and die instantly. Just a little salt. It has no defense for itself. A worm belongs to, to the dirt of the ground, of the earth. And a worm can be trampled easily. Somebody can step on it without even knowing. A worm is constantly exposed to danger. It is a creature that really has no value or concern. <laughs> if you step on a worm, you won't even think twice about it. If a worm is killed in front of your house, your garden, who, is this? who cares? Nobody takes notes of a worm. So when God declares that you and I are a worm, it means for us to appreciate and understand that we are by nature wretched, worthless, weak. Nothing can really be counted concerning us. So we are to take our rightful place in the dust as a worm. You know? I've never heard of worms who fight. But when the Lord calls you a worm, you are still fighting. You fight your best friend, you fight your wife, you fight your children, you fight everybody around you. You are impossible. Once you're around, everybody starts to turn away. Nobody wants to be friends with you. But you are a worm. Have you ever heard worms fight? <laughs> Hallelujah. One of the promises God says is that we are warm. We are healthy. We need to be humble. Another thing about worms is that there is hope for a worm. I pray that you're warm. I pray that you're warm today. There is hope for warm. God's people are men and women who, by the grace of God, have been made to know that they are wretched, weak, worthless worms. So for you to be called a maggot <laughs> is to insult lofty creatures who've never sinned against God and come, you know, and, and, and I mean, when God calls you warm, it's like it's an insult, but it's not. It is not an insult. The Lord says there is a hope for us even as worms. In Psalm 22, 6, Christ became a worm that he might save worms like us. When the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was made to be sin for you and I, they hung him on the tree as a substitute for our sins. And he dried up like a worm. He became like a worm. They took all the blood out of him. They drained him of all the blood. So that he might lift worms from the dung. He can lift you and I from the dung of Christianity that has fallen. And then transform us into sons of God. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord Jesus was crushed to death under the wrath of God. And his 
Lord, put away your sins and my sins. Today, our garments are to be pure and white because he had to be crushed like a wall. He was crushed so that you and I could be blessed. That is the incredible thing about this, our Lord Jesus Christ. He was made to, to be seen. He was made to be something despicable. That we might be made to be the righteousness of God in him. A delight for God. So he was crushed to death under the weight of sin. That we might be raised up to life and to be free from sin. It's an incredible thing. The worm has no hands in which it is to labor. It doesn't have any hands. Worms don't have hands. But the worm has a mouth. Which is able to bore his way into the strongest tree and penetrate to, to the heart of any tree. And he will find food there. He will find safety there. So when the Lord is calling us warm Jacob, his own elect is calling us warm, by praying, by using our mouth to supplicate to him, by crying out to him, we can penetrate his heart. And then we can find in him our food and our safety. Hallelujah. <laughs> it is wonderful, isn't it? That we can ask and it will be given to us. That we can seek and we can find. That we can knock and it shall be opened to us. The Bible says in Luke 11, 9, 10, For everyone that asketh receiveth, have you asked? Anyone that seeketh findeth, have you sought? Anyone that knocks it shall, for it, it shall be opened, have you knocked? He expects us to come boldly. He expects us to come freely in our hearts to his throne of grace, Hebrews 4, 16. And when we get there, what happens? We will obtain mercy. Say to yourself, I will obtain mercy this morning. I will obtain mercy this morning. Hebrews 4, 16 also says, we will find grace to help in the time of need. You know what grace is? Unmerited favor. You don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. Some people don't want to be called warm. Why should pastor call me warm? Hallelujah. Being a warm identifies you with the Son of God in his most glorious character. As our substitute for sin. So I tell you, there is hope to be a worm. God promises us there is hope for being a worm. Another thing is that the worms of the we are, we, we are the worms of, of God's choice. That is what we are. Fear not thou worm Jacob. God is speaking as though he was talking to one man, but he's addressing all his people collectively. When God calls his leg Jacob, and remember what Jacob was, he was a wretched man, weak, worthless, weak, no? but he was a man loved, chosen, called and blessed by God, deadly breaking. Jacob was a man to whom God Almighty had bound and obligated himself by covenant, even to, till today. Even till today. So, we are worms of God's choice. He's the one that chose us. Though we have a worm, we have no cause for fear. If you look at verse 14 there of uh, Isaiah, uh, Isaiah 41, look at, uh, let me take you back to it. Look at verse 14 of Isaiah. What it says there, it says, Fear not thou, one, because and ye men of Israel, I will help thee, save the Lord and thy Redeemer and the Holy One of Israel. I will help thee, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. So you can see there that it's who is talking there. All three persons in the triune Godhead, they have avowed themselves to help the weak, the, the, the weak wretched, worthless one called Jacob. I will help thee, said the Lord. That is God, your Father and my Father's speaking. I will help thee, said thy Redeemer. That is God the Son, the second person speaking. I will help thee, said the Holy One of Israel. That is God, the Holy Spirit, speaking. So, if God is for you and I, who can be against us? <laughs> oh, in Isaiah verses 10 to 17 of Isaiah 41, there are so many promises there. Fear not, for I am with thee. Not only within reach, but in you. Are you dismayed today by the power of your enemies at work? Are you dismayed by the greatness of the trial you are going through? The Lord also says, be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I am thy God. I am thy God. 
I am your sovereign providence. I am your special love. I'm your saving purpose. I am your provision. I am your power, your steadfast power. Are you in a destitute situation? He says, I will strengthen you. I will strengthen you. I will help you. Hallelujah. Are you about to fall or have you already fallen? Maybe you've got to do what you should not do somewhere. You've got to sin somewhere. He says, I will help you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Are those who are your enemies a terror to you? Is your household enemy a terror to you? God he says he will confound them. He will bring them to nothing. Look at it there in the verses 11 and 12. He will slay them. Behold, all the days that are incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. Are you afraid of failure? Many of us are. Don't lie, yes. Many of us are. Our God is saying, I will hold thy right hand then in verse 14. That means I will walk hand in hand with you as your father, as your friend, as your brother. I will guide you. Don't worry. You're afraid. Even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He says, you will not fear for I am with you. He's with you. I will hold you up when you are weak, when you are wavering, when you are trembling, when you have no hope, when you don't know what to do, when there's nobody there to help you in the middle of the night, when you can no longer breathe, when you are wondering if I'm going to die tonight. He says he will be there for you. I will pick you up when you fall. Even when you fall, even though you fall, God will silence your fears if you can walk with him. He say unto thee, fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, I will make you hear the assuring promise that I have given you, that I will help you. Our Lord will help us in the times of trial. Are you with me right now? Bible says, you shall rejoice in the Lord. That's what verse 16 of that Isaiah 41 says. He will make you triumphant at last. Hallelujah. He says, you shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. That his glory is awaiting you and at good times. We will enter into the glory of our Lord. We will enter by his power and by his grace. And we will possess the inheritance of glory unto which we were predestinated by God. So once there, we will be in glory forever. Do our heavens appear to be brass now? Maybe it's all covered. No blessings are flowing through. God says, I will hear them. That is, he will hear us. Does it seem something that God has forsaken? That he doesn't remember us anymore? Our God has not. He says, I, the God of Israel, I will not forsake them. Verse 17 there. I will not forsake them. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Then I shall the flame kindle upon you. Somebody say amen there. He says, for I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel. Mm, hallelujah. Thy Savior, I gave Egypt for thy ransom. Wow. Ethiopia and Seba for thee, since you are precious in my sight. If maybe you don't know you are precious in God's sight. Thou has been honorable and I have loved thee, therefore will I give men for thee and people for their lives. I always tell people, say, Pastor, don't pray that somebody should die. What are you talking about? Isaiah 43, 1 to 5. He says, I will give men for thee and people for their life. Fear not, for I am with thee. The Lord is ready to substitute other people's life for yours, for you to succeed. These are promises. These are promises that God has given us. And by the grace of God, we will live inside those promises. No matter what kind of one we are, our God is going to help us. Somebody say, where they are, my God is going to help me. Hallelujah. The last thing I just want to talk about before we pray now is that the reason why God is pleased to use worms as you and I to accomplish his purposes is that then everyone will know that God did it. When you have nothing, when you are hopeless, and you go to the worst ghetto in your city, and you go and save souls, and one of the souls you save now becomes the general overseer of a 50,000 mega church. Hallelujah! He has used you a worm to save thousands and tens of thousands of souls. You might be dead, you might have gone. You might not even know the person you saved became a great, great general. He might not even remember you again. He might just be the few words you spoke that day that saved somebody and he now became a great general for God. But you know what about our God? That is what pleases him. He has used the one to accomplish his purposes, not yours. 
Any good that is done by us is most assuredly and most manifestly the work of God. So God uses such ones as you and I so that the whole world may see and know and consider. Verse 20 of Isaiah 41. That they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord had done this and the Holy One of Israel had created it. Glory be to God. Amen. Let us pray some prayers now and then we we'll go to rest for the, for the night. Say, O oh Lord, no one can help me except you. Therefore, help me this morning. Help me this morning in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray right now. O oh Lord, no one can help me. No one can help me except you. So help me this morning in the name of Jesus. Help me this morning in the name of Jesus. Help me this morning in the name of Jesus. Help me this morning in the name of Jesus. O oh Lord, no one can help me except you. Therefore, help me, help me, help me this morning, Lord. 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 Help me this morning in the name of Jesus. Help me this morning in the name of Jesus. Help me this morning, Lord. Help me this morning, Lord. Help me this morning, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. The next prayer point. Oh, Lord, only you can turn a worm into a threshing instrument. Let's read the word now. Make me into a threshing instrument this morning in the name of Jesus. Confound those that are my enemies. Go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, only you can turn a worm into a threshing instrument. Make me into a threshing instrument this morning in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray right now in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, make me into a threshing instrument this morning in the name of Jesus. Make me into a threshing instrument this morning in the name of Jesus. Only you, Lord, only you can turn a worm into a threshing instrument. Make me into a threshing instrument this morning in the name of Jesus. Make me into a threshing instrument this morning, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Make me, oh Lord, make me, make me, make me into a threshing instrument, Lord. Make me into a threshing instrument, Lord. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Ask the Lord, ask the Lord, ask the Lord to make you into a threshing instrument this morning. Lord, make me into a threshing instrument this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. The next prayer point. Oh Lord, only you can turn a desert into an oasis. Turn me into an oasis this morning in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. Oh Lord, only you can turn a desert into an oasis. Turn me into an oasis this morning in the name of Jesus. Turn me into an oasis this morning in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord. Only you can turn a desert into an oasis. Turn me into an oasis this morning. Turn me into an oasis this morning in the name of Jesus. Turn me into an oasis this morning in the name of Jesus. Turn me into an oasis this morning in the name of Jesus. Turn me into an oasis this morning, Lord. 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 In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. The next prayer point. Oh Lord, only you can turn around the captivity of Zion. Turn around my captivity this morning in Jesus' name. Go ahead and pray. Oh Lord, only you can turn around the captivity of Zion. Turn around my captivity this morning in the name of Jesus. Turn around my captivity this morning in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, only you can turn around the captivity of Zion. Turn around my captivity this morning. Turn around my captivity this morning. Oh, go ahead and pray. Turn around my captivity this morning, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Turn around my captivity this morning, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Turn around my captivity this morning. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. Ask the Lord to turn around your captivity right now. Ask the Lord to turn around your captivity. Turn around my captivity this morning, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Turn around my captivity this morning, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Turn around my captivity this morning, Lord. In Jesus. Mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. The next prayer point. Oh Lord, only you can fill up the lonely places and valleys in my life. Fill them up now, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Only you can fill up the lonely places and valleys in my life. Fill them up now in the name of Jesus. Fill them up now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Fill them now up. Fill them up, Lord. Fill them up, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Fill up the valleys and lonely places in my life right now. Fill up the valleys and lonely places in my life right now, Lord. 
Fill up the valleys and lonely places in my life right now, Lord. Fill up the valleys and lonely places in my life now, Lord. Fill up the valleys and lonely places in my life right now, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Next prayer point. Oh Lord, your word says, be not dismayed. Be not dismayed. For I am thy God. That is what your word says. Father, restore me from every disappointment in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, your word says, be not dismayed. For I am thy God. So Lord, restore me from every disappointment in the name of Jesus. Restore me from every disappointment in the name of Jesus. Restore me from every disappointment in the name of Jesus. Restore me from every disappointment, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Restore me from every disappointment, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Restore me from every disappointment, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. The next prayer point. Oh, Lord, your word says, and God had chosen the weak things of the world to confound the mighty. That's what your word says. That you have chosen the weak things of the world. You have chosen the worms, hallelujah, to confound the mighty. You have chosen the base things of the world and things which are despised. The Bible says, use me, O Lord, to confound the mighty and wise in this world in the name of Jesus. Use me, worm, to confound the mighty and wise in this world in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray now in the mighty name of Jesus. Use me to confound the mighty and wise in this world in the name of Jesus. Lord, use me, use me, use me, use me to confound the mighty Lord. 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 Use me to confound the mighty Holy Spirit of God. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Isaiah 40, 15 to 19 there. It is God's great glory and pleasure to use the insignificant worms like us for the accomplishment of his purpose. Lord, use me for the accomplishment, the accomplishment of your purpose. Lord, use me for the accomplishment of your purpose in the name of Jesus. Please go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus. Go ahead right now. Lord, use me for the accomplishment of your, of, of your purpose in the name of Jesus. I'll tell you something. You are thinking what kind of prayers are we praying? If you ask God to use you, he will put the millions you are looking for in your hands. For his purpose. But God always gives a little. Hallelujah. When I say little, God gives you 90% of all. It's only 10% he needs. Hallelujah. Lord, use me for the accomplishment of your purpose. Open your mouth and pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, use me, use me, use me, use me, use me. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord, for the accomplishment of your purpose. Use me, Lord, for the accomplishment of your purpose. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to remind you of what I said earlier in Isaiah 43. Since thou was precious in my sight, this is God speaking, and thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee, therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Fear not for I am with you. You're going to say, Father, those that will not allow me to do your purpose, your word says you will give them for my life. So go ahead and give them this morning. Go ahead and pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Those that will not allow me to do your purpose, oh Lord, give, me, give them for my life in the name of Jesus, according to your word in Isaiah 43. Give those men that will not allow me to do your purpose. Give the people that will not allow me to do your purpose. Give them for my life in the name of Jesus. Give them for my life in the name of Jesus. Give them for my life in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Ask the Lord to give them for your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Ask the Lord to give them for your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Give them, O Lord. 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 Give them, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Somebody clap for Master Jesus there. Just go ahead and clap for 